I guess over the years, there have been times when our, we've been very close, normally when he's stable, and there have been times when it's been, our relationship has been very difficult and very strained. And I have to be honest, I'd like to say that I'm a saint, but I'm not. There are times when he's ill, when I'm hugely resentful that I have to do these things, that I didn't have a choice. I feel very angry. I feel guilty that I can't just do it without feeling those things. I feel extremely sad sometimes. Uh, that in many ways he's lost so much. I had no understanding of mental health problems or schizophrenia before either of my brothers were diagnosed. None whatsoever. I don't think it was something that many people concentrated on, say, in the 70s. After my first brother was diagnosed, it would, you would think that it would make it easier for, my, for me to pick up on my second brother, but I, I didn't. And it was just a crushing realisation rather than picking it up along the way. I had no clue that he was going to have the same diagnosis. I absolutely believe that you should love or continue to love the person. You might hate the illness, but to make that separation I think is really, really important. Um, so for me, if anything, we got closer after that um, because I probably felt very sorry for him and felt I had a responsibility to look after him. Um, but, you know, on reflection, I think there's, you can never do too much and you certainly can never do enough. Um, and that's a really hard thing because you're not a professional, you're just a brother. It is easy to dress it up and that you're going to go rallying around because somebody's ill. And the impact on the family um, at the time, I'm sure is horrendous. I'm sure I've blocked a lot of it out because it's just, it's just phenomenal at the time. If you're a sibling growing up and you're younger and your older sibling gets ill, it's very easy to get lost in all of that, right now. So I think, you know, for so many reasons, it's, it's such an important thing for people to have that support and to, to know that there's something there specifically for them, really. Could it hit them young, could it hit them at any age? Who do you turn to? What do you do? Who do you ask? Who tells you about the various things you need to know? Uh, the internet's good for a lot of things and we're lucky to have that today in some senses, but what else have you got? The Siblings Network is an information and support network and it's for people who have a brother or sister with a mental illness and they might have just recently been diagnosed or you may have been living with it for 20 years so it's for people at different stages. So we provide a website which is a really great place for siblings to connect with other people going through similar experiences. They can talk to each other direct, there are blogs and lots of ways for them to share their stories with each other. There's also information on there that's tailored directly for siblings about how you can support your siblings how you can look after your own mental health and lots of kind of expert advice for siblings. Uh, we also have a network of peer-led support groups all across the country where people can get together in a room with other people and share their experiences and kind of offer advice to each other. The one thing you want is somebody's experience. You don't want their opinions, you want their experience. And um, my experience is with a brother with schizophrenia and I don't want to talk to people who don't understand that. And the siblings network Clearly, I've got a load of people to, to draw from their experience. Because we live in this world of social, social media now, I think being able to talk to other people who have siblings with bipolar is immensely useful. Um, and the charity Rethink Mental Illness, I think, is doing a fantastic job in actually bringing those people together. Much more knowledge, um, much you know, even what we think mental illness provide, even all the literature and information that we can give them is something that was never around when, when I had the, that first sort of experience with my brothers. And it was really weird when I walked into the room, it was so weird, I walked into the room the first time and there were all these people there and there were all these stalls like with loads of information and people were being really helpful and had these badges on and I just burst into tears and I had to rush off to the toilet and I knew, I didn't know how I'd feel but I suppose I didn't expect I'd be that emotional because it was just like such a huge thing really not having met lots of people that knew what it was like. I think the thing that I'm hoping that people can get out of this experience that Nick and I have had is that there's always hope, there's always hope for the future. I mean, we, we've been through 
some terrible times and um, we've come through. And I have to say that if I'd known about uh, Rethink Mental Illness, the charity, um, we may have, we may have uh, gone through less struggling times um, knowing what they can offer as a, as a charity, as a support network, as a group of people who understand.